Hi, I'm Matt Aitken. I'm a visual effects supervisor at Weta Digital in Wellington, New Zealand. I was the visual effects supervisor for Weta Digital uh, for our work on Avengers Endgame. Um, so that meant that I was responsible for, um, for delivering Weta's shots on the film. We did about just, uh, just under 500 shots on Endgame in the third act battle. And so um, I oversaw a team of, um, of several hundred artists, maybe about 600 artists that we had a digital working on the film. Um, the way that we structured it this time was that we had um, two teams. We split the work up into, into two chunks. Um, each of those teams had um, a visual effects supervisor assigned to it. Those guys, Sean and Phil, they ran their own dailies um, and um, did a lot of the detail work. And I had a sort of an over overriding view, um, sort of like keeping an eye on both the work of both teams, doing daily reviews with them, working with our animation supervisor, Sydney Combo, making sure that the animation um, was achieving the, um, the, the goals that we had set for it, um, and also um, handling um, relationship, the relationship with the client. So, um, so running all the calls with, with Dan and Jen, um, and also a big part of my role was being on set for the shoot. So I spent quite a bit of time in, um, in Atlanta, Pinewood Studios Atlanta, um, kind of being there while the, the material that was going to make up our sequences was being filmed um, and working with the Marvel on-set VFX team there. So yeah, like, like I say, we, um, our work focused on the third act battle. I think our first shot is a shot of Thanos' eight ship um, unleashing a barrage of missiles onto the Avengers compound. Um, so there's a sequence that we did where the Avengers compound is destroyed by Thanos very soon after he arrives in, um, I was going to say present day, but it's actually 2024, um, the, you know, the, the era when most of the film is set. Um, so our work started there and went right through that end battle um, through to Tony's snap and the, the blips of Thanos' army that follow. And the last sequence we did was um, the scene where we see Tony um, and the damage that he has suffered um, from, from using the Infinity Stones and ultimately that leads to his death. It's a, it's a little bit more work than we did on Infinity War. Infinity War we did like 390 um, and we, we were underway by May. Um, so we had nearly a year on Infinity War. Um, and Partly that was because we were preparing material for the Disney 23, um, D23 event, which they have every two years, and that didn't apply this time. Um, so we needed to get started early on Infinity War. So there's really no comparison in a way. Um, but it's certainly the, the tightest delivery schedule I've ever been involved in by a long way. Yeah, so it's a, it's a battle, but it's got these really key signature moments um, throughout. I, I think the first one is um, when, you know, um, it looks like everything, all, all hope is lost, the, the compound's been destroyed, um, Cap and Iron Man and Thor have taken on Thanos and Thanos has um, one by one sort of taken them out of the fight. Cap's like the last man standing. He, um, Thanos, um, we, we, Thanos reveals that it's not just him who's come forward in time, um, this leap of 10 years. He's brought his whole army with him as well. So he, the dropships land and they unload. Cat bravely stands up and he's, he's facing off against them, but it really does look like all hope is lost. And then uh, it turns out that the plan, this one in 14 million 605, whatever it is, um, uh, plan that Doctor Strange has, has had, um, comes to pass and a portal opens up behind Cap. And there's this magical moment in the film where we realise that um, Cap doesn't have to be there alone. That all, you know, everybody else who's ever been in, a, in an MCU movie is actually going to turn up um, and and join him in, in battle. Um, and so that portal sequence was was one that I was aware had the potential to really resonate with an audience um, in a huge way. And um, and I think it did. And um, I'm really glad that um, that it worked. We 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 we. Um, there were some technical issues that we had to resolve there. We had to make the portals work at a much larger scale than they'd ever worked before, and we had to create all the environments that we see inside the portals. So we're talking Wakanda and New Asgard and Kamataj um, for, the, for the wizards, Contraxia for the ravagers, um, Tyson, where we'd spend a chunk of time in, um, 
in the first film. All these environments had to be, had to be created. But it was really about making sure that the, um, the sequence worked on an emotional level as well. Uh, yeah, we basically had to do digital doubles of, of everybody. <laughs> um, so um, everybody who turns up out of the portals. Um, we did some of the Hulk stuff ourselves. Um, ILM certainly did all the, the key um, Hulk drama beats. Um, but we had a version of Smart Hulk, which we call Battle Hulk, which is kind of like um, the stunty version of Smart Hulk, if you like. So um, shots like when Giant Man busts out of the building, Ben Stanton opens up the palm of his hand, and um, Iron Patriot and Rocket and, and Smart Hulk jump out. And that shot, that's one of our shots. Um, and the, and the, the charge that leads to the initial clash, where we've got Hulk running. You know, we're doing you know, featured Hulk shots and, and beats like that. Um, and the, the barrage when Thanos unleashes the, um, when he's losing the, the battle, when Scarlet Witch is kind of dealing to him and he calls on the eight ship to, to rain fire on the, on the whole crater. Um, that, um, where we see Hulk getting um, blown up in, in, in that sequence, that was, that was us. So we did um, a little bit of Hulk, but we did kind of digital doubles for everybody. Um, probably can't really list them, there's probably 30 or 40 of them. It was, um, it was a big, um, just in terms of like looking at the, the workload, the, um, the asset task on the show was huge. Um, our asset daily session always ran over. Um, <laughs> we had um, an asset manager on the show, she was incredibly busy. We would, um, the assets, you know, we, we had um, some that we'd had, um, you know, we had the few people that we'd run on Titan for Infinity War. We'd just done um, Guardians 2 a year or two ago, so we had Rocket and Gamora and a, a bunch of assets from, from that that we could reuse. They were still pretty current. Um, we built some from scratch because they'd never been seen before in the MCU. So the Chitauri gorillas, the giant war gorillas that, the, um, that Thanos brings to bear in the army, they, they, this is the first time we've seen them in any of these films, so they were something that we worked up from Marvel concept art. Um, and then we did a lot of ingesting of assets from other, other facilities, from, from past movies. Um, and often had to up them to make them work at the level of detail that we needed them to work at in our show. When we, when we take an asset from another facility, so the, um, the model, you know, we'll, we'll look at that. that, that can potentially just work out of the box. Um, there's a reasonably standard way of um, distributing UVs across the geometry these days, so often we won't need to redo that. Um, we hope to be able to reuse textures, but then once you start getting into the shader work and the rig, um, any hair, any cloth, this is all proprietary from shop to shop, and so that stuff all has to be rebuilt from scratch. So the first thing we'll do is we'll, 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 we'll open it up, we'll run a quick turntable, we'll have a look at it in, a, in an asset daily session, and we'll say, yeah, this, this will work for, um, for our needs, or, um, or we'll need to add some more detail to this because um, the level of scrutiny that we're going to have for this character or this creature is going to be higher than it was built for for this other show. Um, and um, we'll either get in and, and do a, an up-res models pass. Um, if we're up-resing the model, typically we have to redo the textures from scratch. You can't really up-res textures, um, so we'll rebuild those from scratch. Um, and it's just a case-by-case -case basis, yeah. So, I mean, Marvel has a fantastic in-house concept design team. They're doing um, all, all the, the, the key concepts will come out of that. But at the same time, we had um, a concept art team on the show that ran the whole time that we were working on it. Um, they really worked on two key aspects of the work. Um, we need to do damage progression stages for Iron Man's um, armour. Um, for, for Thanos and his armour and um, wounds that he suffered on his face, um, for Thor, for Spidey. Um, I think Iron Man had six different damage stages through the, through the fight. So, so we worked those up in concept art first and review those with, with Dan and Jen and the, and the filmmakers and get that all locked off before we go in and do a, a hero digital build of that stuff. And we also did a lot of concept work around the damage that Tony suffers when he does the snap and the, um, the energy from the Infinity Stones um, is terribly damaging to him. It's ultimately fatal, of course. So um, we did a lot of work on, on the look of his scarred face, um, which you know, ranged from minimal damage through to extremely gory. Um, 
stuff that was way too distracting. And so we had to, we spent a lot of time working up um, the look of that. So there's that. Um, but we're also doing things like, <coughs> um, if you look at the Iron Man suit, for example, the new Mark 85 suit, so that started off as, as concept art um, within the Marvel concept design team. And then ILM um, took that and worked it up into a suit. Um, and Dan was happy with that, it came to us. Um, we had a few ideas about how it could, um, it could be tweaked, so we did a pass on it, um, showed that to Dan, he liked that, that went back to ILM. So, you know, it's sort of like a collaborative process about how something like that or Iron Man suit, uh, sorry, how something like the Iron Man suit or, or Spidey suit, um, you know, the form that they finally take um, can be a collaborative process between us and other facilities um, working to, um, to Dan in the filmmaker's direction. And I don't want to make a big song and dance out of the, the time frame because, because it, was, it was actually okay, you know? We, um, we had enough people on the show to pull it off. Um, and we, got a, we had a really great team at Weta Digital. You know, we, um, people really wanted to work on this film. And so um, we got um, a really great bunch of artists work, working on the show, um, which makes it possible. You know, that's, that's how come the, the work can be done as quickly as it was to the quality level that, that we were able to achieve. Um, yeah, it's um, the, the things that you spend the most time on um, developing are, are things like um, Scarlet Witch's, um, the effect of Scarlet Witch's magic, for example. That stuff that's um, kind of um, really has to be designed in the CG. You can do concept work for it, um, but it ultimately it's never going to look finished until it's been through an effect simulation, it's been lit and rendered, it's been comped, it's, you know, it's got all those treatments applied to it, that's when it's going to take its final form. Um, so there's got to be an iterative process in CG around something like that. Um, and we spent a bit of time um, on, on Scarlet Witch's magic. So um, the story that we were told about her is that, you know, since Ultron she's been kind of learning how to use her powers and they've been developing through each of the films. So by the time we get to Civil War, she's kind of got to a point where she can, like, you know, wrestle a whole control tower at an airport. Um, but, um, and then, you, you know, you saw what she did at the end of Infinity War. But um, when we came to have that fight that she has with Thanos in the middle of the battle, um, we were told that, you know, she's really been able to, to take her powers to a new level, a new... Um, strength um, for this fight. And Dan sent us um, some really great reference art from, from the, the comic, um, from the comics, from the, the Marvel comics, where you know, we've seen her use her powers in new ways. And we use that as reference for building up um, like a, a more intense version of her powers than we've seen um, in previous films. Um, and that, that takes time. And um, and it's tricky to get right, but um, I was very happy with the way it all worked out. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a couple of things we did that, that were new. Um, when Thanos blips out, um, the, you know, the, the, the flakes and the dust all blow away in a, in a, in a swirl, uh, which is something we definitely had done with the hero blips in Infinity War. But um, the way that we'd created the, the wind field that, that, um, that blows that stuff away, it was... Um, We'd always just use Thanos as a blocker to that, but what we're able to do is kind of is form a loop with our wind field. So the wind is um, is blowing the blips away, but um, the the colliders uh, isn't isn't Thanos as he was at the start. The collider state is constantly being updated, so it's the blip flakes themselves. So um, so as he clears away, the wind just becomes more. Um, Regular, regular and uniform, because he's not there anymore. So there's an added complexity to the to the vortices and the eddies um, of the wind that's blowing Thanos away, um, because we're able to. And it took a little bit of setting up. We're able to um, to make a dynamic collider set as opposed to a static collider set for that. Um, so we we brought that tech to bear. There's um, some extra complexity that we're able to add to Thanos' um, facial performance. Um, so we, 
we essentially used the same Thanos as we had um, for Infinity War. We redressed him in armor, so he wasn't in his um, philosopher costume, he was in his battle armor for this film. Uh, but we, um, we used a, some new tech at Weta called Deep Shapes to add complexity to um, the way um, his face behaves when it goes from one expression to the next. So that the endpoints of the expression aren't affected, but um, there's extra complexity to the shapes through the transition. So we're getting a little bit of a sense of inertia that's um, balanced out by the depth of the facial tissue. It's not a simulation, it's actually an analytical process that runs um, builds this complexity in, um, and it's subtle, but it adds um, a sense of natural believability to the face that wasn't there before. We think it's very successful. It's great if people are enthusiastic about this work and, and, and want to work in this field and want to work on these films. I mean, they're incredibly satisfying projects to work on. Um, they're hard, but I think um, the payoff is huge as a result. Um, so yeah, it's great that people are interested. I think people should just really work out what they're passionate about, work out what they really love doing, and, and get very good at it. Um, the way we necessarily have to work at Weta Digital on these projects is that there's a lot of artists working in a very specialised fashion, you know, working in, in one area that they get really good at. And um, it's that kind of... Um, combined effort of, of specialists who are working at the top of their game that, that produces work of this quality. So that's why I say um, don't do what you think you should be doing, do what you love doing and that's the thing that you're going to get really good at. Um, but yeah, do, do keep doing it because um, there's a lot of this work to be done and we need, we need people to do it. <laughs>